Listen to that music. Yeah. Hello everyone, welcome to Kerbal Space Program. Today we are playing with space shuttles. Because why not? My love for the space shuttles in this game actually came from uh, not only reading novels about it, but also uh, basically they're much, much more difficult than actually just using pods to go wherever you want to or uh, just using drones. Also, you'll notice that this is not the default crew. Uh, because on a previous flight, I kind of exploded them while trying out the faster than light travel mod. I didn't realize it would explode the craft if I ran out of battery and didn't pack enough batteries. So basically, just kind of a quick overview of the shuttle so far. I do have modded in engines, as you can see, uh, including roll program, that's courtesy of MechJub. But basically the engines are angled so the fuel tank has no engine on the back unlike a previous video I made that was a 100% stock uh, actually no I take that back it did have procedural parts but it was basically a stock Kerbal Space Program I try to make a stock a uh, space shuttle as possible but this one is using a few mods it's using the procedural part pack again which is why I have a procedural fuel tank here also the SRBs, they uh, of course allow you to do procedural things, and there's Mechjev messing up, but that's fine. So you can do your procedural parts there. Also, uh, for some reason I have not figured out, sometimes on some flights, some of your decouplers will start to overheat for absolutely no reason. So I'm going to fix that quickly here with ignore max temperature, because it I honestly don't know why it does it. It only does it about half the time. I think it's just a bug with procedural parts. But going to have a full overview soon, uh, including how to build the shuttle. But basically, again, procedural part pack there, doing those. Uh, I will upload these main engines somewhere else. Uh, I did get them out of another part pack, it, but that pack has been discontinued. And it also had a, a custom gimbaling mod installed with it that is uh, also discontinued and uh, no longer worked on so took that part out just made it into a normal mod part and so there's the again the angled engines there which are now keeping it from tumbling out of control while it only has the external tank attached to the underbelly um, Megjeb does handle it pretty well has almost no problems out of it especially considering that they have the uh, normal shuttle amount of gimbal which is something like 12.5 uh, degrees if I recall for the space shuttle main engine so uh, they're gimbling right now it's what's giving the shuttle the control I did turn on the RCS the other mod I do have installed if you've noticed it does look like a actual space shuttle it's due to the uh, what is it the space shuttle lifting bodies part pack which includes nose cone it includes the underbody which goes all the way back to where the engines hook in and it has three mount points for the engines or a single large mount point in the middle in case you just want to go with an oversized engine or something and uh, it also has retexturing for the wings which we'll get to here in just a moment uh, as we continue ahead towards sunrise which you can see on the horizon there but yes the uh, OMS pods here I forgot to mention them for a second uh, they do also come with that parts pack right now this thing is trying to gimbal really weird so I'm just going to turn off the RCS so it doesn't waste a bunch as the OMS uh, pods here they also use your RCS uh, monopropellant to put you into orbit and take you out of orbit because uh, you do well I personally drop off the external tank before doing the circularization burn you can choose not to if you want to it honestly doesn't matter but if you want to be more uh, true to life you, you know that's basically what they did. Also in uh, later shuttle missions during this portion of the burn uh, they did flip right side up if I recall or they did it before the uh, before they dropped the external tank off but I that's again another thing where I just don't do it personally. You can if you feel so inclined to do so yourself. But as you can see right now uh, the fuel tanks actually off mass 
the way I built it whenever I was playing with the same parts, just uh, with real world. Uh, trying to think of the word with real world thrust values and everything uh, I ended up making the tank actually into two pieces had it drained from the bottom to the top so it would thrust better through center of mass uh, since uh, in real world tanks you know they're stored differently and I wasn't using uh, a tank mod or anything like that I just kept using just the procedural part pack and uh, I use it in real solar system without the realism overhaul which I've yet to try But again, you can see where these are tilted pretty far down. That's just uh, where these are <laughs> going very near to the end of their gimbal limit just to keep it in orbit. And now it's going to stop here, which means I will kill Ascent Guidance real fast because it does like to coast to the edge of the atmosphere. It will not uh, get rid of the tank by itself. By the way, if you see here, I'll actually bring up MechJev. I'm more well-versed in MechJev than Flight Engineer at this point. But as you can see here, uh, does have something to the order of uh, 1.5 kilometers second delta V left over in this tank here. Uh, you can also do, if you use MechJeb to fly up, which I personally do because I can't gimbal that well using uh, analog keyboard controls, I don't have a flight stick. Uh, I could always either use that or a 360 controller. You can actually set one of those up in the options uh, to gimbal a little better there. So I will disable that. Uh, jettison the tank there. Gonna turn on RCS and move away from it slightly <laughs> because uh, I have had problems with uh, turning the autopilot back on and then MechJeb just wanting to slam the tail into the tank whenever it flips over, of course, because that always works out well. As you can see here though, our perhaps this is already uh, 45 kilometers, that was at the end of the burn. Uh, right now we also have no cargo in the cargo bay, which is why there were still, you know, 1.5 kilometers second delta V left in that tank. Uh, you can carry, I think, the heaviest I've done, because uh, I do have the fuel bay taken up with another thing that I'll be showing here in just a second from the lifting body part pack. It is uh, actually a docking adapter that goes inside of the bay. But since that is in there, it does kind of restrict uh, how big of uh, a cargo you can put into the bay. All right, I'll go ahead and do it right here while it's doing a circulation burn. Circularization there. So right here's the docking adapter. I, I use the shielded one for looks, but uh, do be mindful. If you set it up like this, it does not clear the top of the cockpit. So if you do plan on docking to something, it will have to have an adapter that comes out from the body. So if you just try to dock it up to like a giant fuel tank or something, uh, you will end up just slamming the, the pod repeatedly into the structure, which I have done before. But uh, just let it finish most of the circularization burn there. I didn't feel like having it go uh, another, you know, kilometer, half a second over there. Yeah, this is the space shuttle again by the uh, lifting body part pack. It will have a link down in the description. Again, the RCS is all just contained in those part packs. Also, the nose has its own monopropellant, the uh, OMS pods do, as well as the lifting body. Now, uh, interesting about the thing about the lifting body, I will go back to the the hangar here in just a moment to show you but uh, you can actually change what kind of fuels are in it so if you are actually just wanting to make like a mark 3 plane that only stays in atmosphere and just put like liquid fuel in it with air air breathing engines you could do that or if you want to have like a self-propelled vehicle that carried its own fuel in the bay you could do that as well so we will go back to space center uh, space center even we won't be doing a re-entry on this video, probably the next one, and then uh, I do want to do a series of that of actually building it and then how to do everything uh, by yourself. But here in the fab, we will load uh, the Discovery ship back up here. Uh, also, note the thrust to weight ratio uh, for the max over there is 1.36 at launch. Uh, that's actually a little higher than the actual space shuttle. Uh, so, do be mindful of that. However, the Whenever stage two takes over, which is just the engines, that's actually fairly close, if I recall, to the actual weight ratio. So again, you can just right click the lifting body here and just hit next variant. And looks like it's just not gonna update, but uh, model propellant of 300 there actually does make it a little lighter. Then you have the next variant after that. Uh, and honestly, they apparently changed it since the last patch, so disregard what I said. Could have sworn you could have went through different 
Yep, current variant standard. Next variant blank. Oh, actually, I take that back. The variants are now uh, only for that. I could have sworn. I guess it was in a preview. Oh no, here it is. Next tank set up. I was completely wrong. The uh, the variants are for the the looks on the bottom of the plane. We'll get to that later. But uh, next tank set up. There is liquid fuel and oxidizer. It's not a whole lot. That is barely enough to get this beast off the ground for just a couple minutes hang time. Like basically fly around and uh, do touch and goes with the landing strip, which is honestly how I tra uh, test out my ship designs. But I hope you liked the vehicle video. Again, we will have a uh, reentry video soon. And also we'll be doing a multi-part series on building a space shuttle and then probably uh, making like a small space station or something with it.